topics that always seems to come up around gigahertz upgrades is whether or not you need to re-space the amplifiers based on how far away they were the last time you upgraded. Two questions here. Why does that matter, and how is Cox set for its amplifier spacing? Well, I, I'll answer the, the second one first. We, we were set, I think, pretty well nationally after having been through our 750 megahertz upgrades where, well, I guess I should have called them rebuilds because to a large extent, a rebuilding is what we did. And we did have to respace amplifiers uh, when we went through the, the 750 megahertz upgrades or rebuilds. Uh, and that's what put us in pretty good stead. Uh, the reason why it's important is because anytime you have to respace an amplifier, that means you have to physically go out to that amplifier physically cut it out of the network, pull it out, re-splice that point, take it to another point in the network, and cut the network open and re-splice that amplifier uh, back into the network. That takes a lot of labor. It's very costly and it's extremely disruptive to our customers. Uh, so that's why not having to re-space is, is very important. Our Eon upgrade, on the other hand, was uh, and is a drop-in upgrade. Uh, we go to each uh, amplifier housing and we simply unplug the electronics in that housing and plug in a new set of electronics in the housing, leaving the housing in, in place. Therefore, it's uh, much less expensive and much less labor intensive and certainly much less disruptive uh, on, our, on our customers. Is there a non-engineering or like a, a non-engineer friendly way to describe why you have to respace the amplifiers in some cases? Well, um, in, in a network, um, it's very important that signal levels are remain at a specific level at the input of every amplifier. And therefore, each amplifier has a specific amount of amplification and so the output level of that amplifier should be within a specific target range. So the input range and the output range of the amplifier is very important um, for uh, noise performance, uh, from a noise performance perspective. Um, therefore, um, in some instances, um, if an amplifier is too far away from the amplifier in front of it, signal levels get down to a level that, that are so low because of the attenuation of the cable. As the signal traverses the cable, the signal level gets lower and lower, such that at the input to the amplifier, uh, the, the, the next amplifier, the levels may not be uh, high enough and you'll, it'll be a very, very noisy system. How long does it take on average to take a system from 750 or 860 to a gig? You know, and this is the typical engineering answer that we talked about earlier, and that's it depends. And I, I really can't give you a specific time frame that it takes uh, because of all the variables involved. And the variables are how many people do you actually have working on it, whether they're your people or contractors, what time or what period of, of time during the day are you able to work on the upgrade? Because we very specifically did this upgrade as much as we possibly could during the maintenance window in the middle of the night. Uh, and so that, that narrows the amount of time that you have available to be able to do the actual upgrade itself. And it's also completely dependent upon you know, financial and budget constraints. So we've had some systems that have completed their upgrade thousands of miles of plant um, within the span of less than a year. And we've had other systems, similar size systems that have uh, taken a much longer time frame to do it and maybe have stretched that out for financial considerations uh, over the span of a couple of years. So it really does depend.